Maple syrup urine disease is an inherited condition that is characterized by a maple syrup urine odor. In this lesson, we're going to talk about what causes this condition. We're also going to talk about the common clinical presentation, common subtypes of this condition, and what we can do to diagnose and treat it. So maple syrup urine disease is caused by a deficiency of the enzyme branched chain alpha-ketoacid dehydrogenase, which is an enzyme encoded by four genes. This leads to a dysfunction of branching amino acid metabolism. We can remember the branching amino acids by the mnemonic VIL, or V-I-L. Valine, isoleucine, and leucine are the three branching amino acids. This condition is an autosomal recessive inherited condition. And because it's an autosomal recessive condition, an affected individual has to be homozygous for the affected alleles. And anybody that's heterozygous with the affected alleles will be unaffected carriers. And it commonly presents as psychomotor delay a child with feeding problems, maple syrup, urine, odor. So those are the three kind of major presentations. And maple syrup urine odor is caused by an isoleucine metabolite. This condition is quite rare. It's approximately a prevalence of around 1 in 86,000 to 1 in 185,000 births. And what happens is because there's a dysfunction in branching amino acid metabolism, we get an increase in the branching amino acids. So we get an increase in concentration of valine, isoleucine, and leucine. And what happens is the increase in these uh, branching amino acids actually leads to inhibition of the uptake and transport of large neutral amino acids into the brain itself. And the, the large neutral amino acids include tyrosine and tryptophan. So because when we have really high levels of valine, isoleucine, and leucine, they actually inhibit the transport of tyrosine and tryptophan into the brain. And because we get a reduced uptake of tyrosine and tryptophan into the brain, we need tyrosine and tryptophan to make dopamine and serotonin. So we actually get a reduced synthesis of dopamine and serotonin in the brain. So we need tyrosine to make dopamine and we need tryptophan to make serotonin. So you get a decreased synthesis of dopamine and serotonin in the brain. So we're just going to quickly talk about the metabolism of branching amino acids in general. So the first step in a, a branching amino acid metabolism involves the enzyme branching amino transferase or BCAT. So valine gets converted to alpha keto isovalerate, isoleucine gets converted to alpha keto beta methylvalerate, and then leucine gets converted to alpha keto isocaparate. So these three are known as the alpha keto acids. So once we have the three alpha keto acids, they can be acted on in a second step by the enzyme branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase or BCKDH to produce a variety of metabolites like propionyl CoA, acetyl CoA, and isovaleryl CoA. This step is actually an irreversible step. And these metabolites can be further processed into other metabolites that can be used in the TCA cycle. Now, what happens in maple syrup urine disease is that the enzyme BCKDH is dysfunctional. So what happens is we can't actually process the alpha keto acids or the branching amino acids any further. So we get an increase in concentration of valine, isoleucine, and leucine along with the keto acids themselves. Now there are several subtypes of maple syrup urine disease. There is classic, intermittent, intermediate, thiamine responsive, and E3 deficient variants of maple syrup urine disease. The Three we're going to talk about in this lesson are classic, intermittent, and intermediate. Classic maple syrup urine disease is the most common type. It is represented by having a BCKDH activity level of less than 3%. And because it's so severe, signs and symptoms present within 48 hours of birth. The signs and symptoms include ketonuria, irritability, poor feeding, lethargy, vomiting, and dystonia. Eventually, a baby will develop seizures, apnea, and cerebral edema. It can also have metabolic intoxication episodes. And in these episodes, these episodes are due to increased endogenous protein catabolism. So it can be due to infection, injury, fasting, and exercise. And these episodes are characterized by epigastric pain, vomiting, anorexia, muscle weakness. Now, the next subtype we're going to look at is the intermittent variant. It is the second most common type, and it is represented by a BCKDH activity level of 5 to 8%. It is characterized by neurologic impairment and developmental delay, but individuals with intermittent subtype have a normal growth and development generally. But during episodes of catabolic stress, they present with ketoacidosis. They can also have issues with recurrent otitis media, and they can get ataxia, lethargy, seizures, and coma, typically during catabolic stress episodes.
In the intermediate maple syrup urine disease subtype, this is caused by mutations in E1 alpha subunit of the BCKDH enzyme. And what happens is, generally speaking, the activity level is generally higher in intermediate uh, maple syrup urine disease, and it's approximately 3 to 30 percent. And onset of symptoms can occur at any age. So generally speaking, there is a later presentation of this condition when an individual has higher BCKDH activity levels. So if, it's, if they're around 30 percent of a BCKDH activity level, they won't present until later in life. And signs and symptoms of intermediate maple syrup urine disease include acute neurological symptoms, including irritability, dystonia, developmental delay, and seizures. So intermediate maple syrup urine disease is the least severe form and it can occur at any age. So what can we do to make the diagnosis and what can we do to manage individuals with maple syrup urine disease? Diagnosis is made by uh, seeing elevated plasma levels of branched-chain amino acids. You can also see elevated urine levels of branched-chain keto acids, pyruvate, and lactate. Diagnosis can also be made by detection of alloisoleucine and 2-oxo-3-methylvaleric acid with a HPLC. You can also see this with newborn screening as well. Now, to manage individuals, there are a few options. One is dietary therapy. So you want to restrict the intake of branched-chain amino acids in their diet. And you want to monitor closely their plasma amino acid levels. Plasma leucine concentrations are generally speaking, we want them between 75 to 200 micromoles per liter in children less than five years of age and 75 to 300 micromoles per liter for patients greater than five years of age to achieve a favorable intellectual outcome. And then when there's ever any of those uh, acute metabolic de decompensation episodes we talked about earlier, we want to have an aggressive treatment for these. And what we do is we want to rapidly lower leucine concentrations. And what we do is that we actually infuse glucose. So it's an infusion of glucose because what happens is when we infuse glucose, we actually inhibit protein catabolism and promote protein synthesis. So we use glucose to actually lower the leucine concentrations. And during the same period of time, you want to stop protein intake for 40, or 24 to 48 hours. And in, in rare cases, we might actually have to go to a liver transplantation as well. So if you want to learn more about branching amino acid metabolism in more detail, please check out my lesson on that topic. If you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support this channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.